Friday Night Stars, presented by Whataburger, is brought to you by GEICO, 85 years of savings and service. Texas Lottery, play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. And by Whataburger. Stop on by Whataburger and try the patty melt today. It's an all-time favorite for a reason. It is week number eight of this high school football season, and this is Friday Night Stars. Bill Jones along with Kyle Yeomans as we are set to kick off another weekend of high school football. Less than a month left in this regular season. A lot of jockeying for playoff positioning as, uh, of course, we kick it off every week right here at the Star in Frisco with a showdown at the Star we'll talk about later. But... You know, it's a little, little more coolness in the air, a little more crispness in the air. It's feeling a little bit more like football season. Just, just a little bit. It's still a little warm outside, but once you get toward Halloween and the latter parts of October, then you can get out the letter jackets, you can get out the big coats, and you can go to the football game bundled up a little bit in that football weather. You know, uh, a couple of schools that have their letter jackets just filled with patches. That is our Whataburger <laughs> game of the week. It's one of the best matchups in the entire state of Texas. It's it's the Allen Eagles making a trip up to Denton to take on the unbeaten Geyer Wildcats, a District 5-6A matchup. Allen coming off a 71-29 win over Little Elm last week. And, of course, first-year head coach Chad Morris knows it's a little different deal this week against Denton Geyer. I mean, our district is so tough. I mean, there is no down weeks. You have to prepare your tail off or you'll get beat. And, and uh, the, you know, Little Elm was no different. 5-1 and one coming in here. And, um, you know, I, I think it gives our guys a lot of great confidence. We've got a heck of a football team. We're going to play next week in Geyer, but get these guys prepared and we'll, we'll, we'll travel to Denton and, and, and play to our standard. For Chad Morris, who of course, of course was the head coach at Arkansas, then offensive coordinator at Auburn, he's got to feel like that District 5-6A is like the little Southeastern <laughs> Conference when he's got to go up against Denton Geyer. No doubt about it. And this could be very well the district championship bout. I mean, 5-6A is so tough top to bottom. But starting with the Allen Eagles, can they keep that offense going against the Geyer defense that's top 10 in the area? I mean, Geyer puts up 16 points per game against, but this Allen team is 10th in scoring offense in the DFW area. You mentioned the 70 plus points a week ago against Little Elm and most of that production came from Jalen Jenkins. 12 carries, 213 yards, four touchdowns in the win over the Lobos. He's averaging over 11 yards per carry and 14 touchdowns on the ground this year. Geyer on the other side has been so defensively stout from the beginning of the year forward, but four star Jackson Arnold has been dealing. Over 1,600 yards passing, 14 touchdowns, three interceptions, and he's got, or excuse me, he's got four touchdowns on the ground as well. He's a dual threat quarterback that can do a whole lot of different things, and I really like the way this defense flies to the football. Uh, Jackson Arnold, a 6'1", a junior who has offers from Arkansas, Ole Miss, TCU, among others, and they always have a ton of talent. Uh, there is one common opponent these uh, two teams have, though, as Allen's only loss on the season, season came against Umbola Atascacita 41-20, while Geyer won over Umbola Atascacita 46-35. That's any indication Geyer's got a potential advantage there, but that's a really, really good football team from Itascacita. They could go week on, week off, but those Allen Eagles are starting to play better than they did when they played Itascacita early on. And, of course, uh, Geyer had that huge win earlier in the year against Denton Ryan, 14-7. to All right, game number two, our matchups of the week. How about Sam Harrell and Ennis as they play against Crandall in a District 8-5A Division II matchup? Yeah, this Ennis team's still really, really good. Looks like another favorite at the 5A D2 level and they put up 40 plus points in the last two weeks outscoring opponents 117 to 27 over the last three weeks and a big reason for that quarterback Jackson Gilkey has been throwing the ball really really well but it's also the excuse me the Grayson Harris show 39 receptions this year 800 yards eight touchdowns over 
20 yards per catch. I mean, that is a passing offense from Ennis that is just as good as we've seen in the past uh, with Coach Harrell's squad. Well, and, and Sam Harrell is known to have those fleet-footed wide receivers back in the glory days at Ennis. And Grayson Harris, by the way, he's a 5'9", 160-pound freshman. And he's already yes, he doing is. that as, as a freshman at the class of 5A level. All right, one of the best matchups, I think, of this week. It's a rematch of a December 26th playoff matchup last week, uh, last year, when Mansfield Summit beat Colleyville Heritage in the regional semifinals 34 to 31 as they advanced all the way to the state semifinals. And Colleyville Heritage under head coach Kirk Martin has a fine team again this year. It's one of the best matchups in the state. Yeah, and Summit winning that game by that field goal, but both teams undefeated in District 4 5A right now. We'll start with Summit, led by red hot David Hopkins. Three touchdowns, 230 yards last week. That may just be a, a middle of the road stat line if it wasn't the fact that he only had one incompletion. He went 14 oh. of 15 throwing the football last week in a win against Richland. He's a dual threat quarterback that can get the throws all the way out to outside the numbers and really feed his weapons well. But you mentioned Colleyville Heritage. I mean, a top defense in the area under 16 points per game. Only gave up 21 last week against a really, really good Red Oak offense that puts up points in their own right. This is best, pretty much their biggest offensive threat. I think for the rest of the season, if they can slow down Hopkins, I think Coach Martin should be able to manufacture enough points on offense that gives them a, a potential advantage. But that is a huge if to slow down a guy like Hopkins. And uh, you look at Mansfield Summit last year; they lost in the state semifinals to Denton Ryan, 49 to 35. Lost five Division One recruits off that team, and their two losses this season in the season opener in overtime against Oklahoma Perennial Power Jinx and against defending uh, Class 6A state champion. Austin Westlake. All right, some other notable games around the area. Look at the list here. McKinney Boyd taking on Little Elm. You got Garland and Saxe and a battle in Frisco. It's Lone Star and Wakeland. Who do you like off that list? Well, since we are Whataburger Friday Night Stars, it's only right to talk about the Water Bowl between Lone Star and Wakeland. They battle for the Whataburger every single year, and so far, at least over the last decade, that has been a series dominated by the Rangers. Also, Lone Star gets their quarterback back, Garrett Rangel, the Oklahoma State commit, missed some time after getting injured in that Alito game. He's back at throwing the ball well. This is a team that is ramping up for a matchup with Denton Ryan, but two of the best running backs in Frisco, Ashton Genty for Lone Star, Jared White, who has over 1,000 yards, second in the area for Wakeland. Two teams that whoever controls the line of scrimmage is going to win this football game, but I think at least at the moment, it looks like Lone Star has the advantage. And the other game that I like off that list is Garland against Saxe, as we noted on the graphic there. Both teams unbeaten in district play. Great matchup of quarterback Sergio Perez for unbeaten Garland. Alex Orgy for Saxe, which is 4-2 and two on the season. Alright, we're just getting started on this edition of of Friday Night Star. So much more to come. In fact, up next, it's our showdowns at the Star. This segment was brought to you by Whataburger. Order online using the app or at whataburger.com for curbside pickup from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. or delivery. This segment is brought to you by Texas Lottery. Play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. Time for our showdowns at the Star as Friday Night Stars continue. And on Thursday night, in fact, at the top of the hour, inside Ford Center here at the Star in Frisco, Prosper Rock Hill takes on Frisco Memorial. That a District 7-5A Division II matchup. And on Friday night, your usual showdown at the Star this week, Kyle Yeomans, it's from District 5, 5A Division 1. Yeah, and two teams that are desperately in need of a win. Independence last week falling to Wakeland, getting blanked in that football game because a lot of their top players have been dealing with some injuries. Coach Kyle Story and company have not gotten off to the best start that you've seen the Knights, or at least the one that you're used to seeing the last couple of years. You could say the same thing for the Centennial Titans, still looking for their first win of 2021. Coach Matt Webb has been climbing all the way uphill, dealing with a ton of injuries himself. But this is still a ball club that is very young, still growing, and looking ahead to building to the future.
Youth and inexperience have been the buzzword surrounding the 2021 Centennial Titans program, a team that has returned less than five starters on both sides of the football. And as we enter week eight, they are still searching for their first win this year. Well, I think that we're continually trying to improve, and I've been proud of their work ethic. I've been proud of the way that we've competed. Uh, we've come a little short on the scoreboard a few times, and, and we're really looking to uh, have a strong second half of the season. For the rest of the season, we'll, we'll be a lot better. Our defense has improved a lot, and we're getting back some players on offense. One of those players is senior quarterback Tyler Rich, who has battled injuries throughout the year despite being a positive force for the offense. He's a dual threat kind of kid. He can run a little bit and he can hurt you with his arm, but I've uh, been real proud of him. Uh, as a first year starter, he's done an excellent job of leading our team and we're excited to see how much better he gets in the second half. The improvement and growth has been apparent from all three units as the year goes along. Even with a tough district slate with teams like Denton Ryan and Wakeland, the Titans have shown a noticeable elevation in their performance. The last two games have been much better. I think we're tackling better. Uh, you know, we, we didn't return a whole lot of starters on that side of the ball. So I think as they've gotten more experience, they've continued to improve. And uh, I've been pleased with their effort. This week, they battle a banged up independence team and will lean on their mindset and belief to notch win number one. We don't we don't quit no matter how much how much we're up or how much we're down. We just keep going. So there are four games left in the Centennial season. Independence, Lone Star, Reedy, Denton. It doesn't get easier for the Titans. And if they don't go 500 or at least 500, it'll be the lowest win total for Centennial High School since 2007. But you want to hear the positive side? Okay, let's hear it. Six years after the 2007 season, Centennial went to the playoffs five times and had two 12-win seasons. So this is a rebuilding ball club. Tons of underclassmen across the board for Coach Matt Webb and company. And you can see this year the growth really from beginning to end, just how much they're starting to learn a lot as a football team. You know, for these Frisco ISD schools, it's so special to be able to play games here at the Star in Frisco. There are 10 Frisco ISD schools. I wonder, how do you figure out who your rivalry, <laughs> rivalry is with? I don't know how you figure that out. Of course, you have to battle over a Whataburger if you're Lone Star in Wakeland. Maybe you got in a fight or a little scuffle at some point four or five years back and now all of a sudden that school is your rival. I don't know how that actually sort, sorts itself out. Well, there's a lot of rivalry games around the area. When we come back here on Friday Night Stars, how about the rivalry down south? The Battle of Beltline. It's DeSoto and Cedar Hill up next. This segment was brought to you by Texas Lottery. Play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. This segment is brought to you by Whataburger. Stop on by Whataburger and try the patty melt today. It's an all-time favorite for a reason. The tradition continues at DeSoto High School once again this year as the Eagles should be a playoff bound again. And as Keith Russell reports, there's a real feeling of brotherhood on this year's team. You know a high school team is close when the players refer to each other as brothers. In DeSoto's case, it's the truth. Juniors Cayman Mathis and Crimson Mathis came into the world two minutes apart. We got a different connection than other people, but I think we, I think most twins have a different connection than other people do with their other siblings. That's true. Like you, you can tell we're bonded together more than any of your other siblings. Let's go! Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Even more unique, they play for their dad, Claude Mathis, DeSoto's head coach. They're always doing something to each other. They're always playing with each other. I mean, they, they never stop touching each other, and it's just one of those things where, guys, quit. Please quit, man. Never was the brotherly love greater than the second game of this season when Crimson, a receiver, broke his leg requiring surgery. In my junior year, I knew it was going to mess up my recruitment. If I can go hard and I, if this ever happened, I get a scholarship, and they, I can bring my brother a package deal. About the only thing that separates the Mathis twins is one won't step on this field again this season. But their closeness, that's everlasting. This is a unique thing. And to have him by my side doing it is just, it's special. Twins or not, they still have their pet peeves. Screams nonstop every day, nonstop on the game. Can't take it. One right now is him hitting me while I'm on crutches and I can't do nothing about it. Knowing they can always lean on each other as a crutch means more than any game. 
Well, one thing's for sure, this is the place to be for college scouts at Cedar <laughs> Hill and DeSoto. The Battle of Beltline, these are two schools that are literally located about a mile apart from each other. And every year, it's a classic matchup. This year should be no different, Kyle. No doubt about it. I mean, this is the top notch of the top notch rivalry in all of North Texas. Coach Lynn from Cedar Hill saying that it is by far the best rivalry because of the close in proximity and the close in talent. I'll start with DeSoto. I mean, this is a team that when they score 45 points or more, they're going to win the football game for the most part. Last week, they put up 72 in a win over Waco. Uh, John, or excuse me, John Tay Cook the second and Mike Murphy have it given great targets for quarterback Matt Allen to throw the football to. They need a win to keep their positioning alive in that district already with a district loss. Cedar Hill on the other side, led by Coach Lynn, struggled to get the offense off the ground last week in a 14-10 win over Waxahachie. Cedric Harden Jr., the quarterback, leads the way for that Longhorns offense and they're going up against a really really tough DeSoto defense. This is going to be a fun one. You know, uh, you look at this rivalry and it really started getting good again about 15 years or so ago and when Joey McGuire uh, took over that Cedar Hill program. Of course, Joey McGuire now the recruiting coordinator and assistant coach down at uh, Baylor University. And it, it every year you just don't know. It doesn't matter what their records are, who's ranked higher than the other team. It always seems to come down to the wire. You can throw that all out the window because these kids have grown up together. They've seen each other in prep games, seven on seven. It doesn't matter. There's so much leading up to this moment, and you're no, you know it's going to be in front of a sold-out crowd, standing room only. It's one of the best games in the state. All right, those are two of the power programs in all of the state of Texas. Who are our power programs this week here on Friday Night Stars when we come back? Welcome back to Friday Night Stars here at the Star in Frisco. Bill Jones along with Kyle Yeomans. And this is something we do every week here on the show. It's our power programs. There are no rules. We can come <laughs> up with our three power programs. Each of us have three. Who are your three this week? Kyle? So I'm going with the theme of winning on the scoreboard, winning on the ground as well. Powerful run games throughout the DFW area, starting with Frisco Lone Star. They have not had Garrett Rangel up until the last couple of weeks. Ashton Genty, the Boise State product, or I guess I should say commit, 102 carries over or close to 900 yards. 19 touchdowns on the ground, nine receiving as well. 28 total scores for Genty. Zach Hernandez with Rockwall Yellow Jackets. He's up over 1,200 yards total, and that's a team that really likes to throw the ball too. And then, uh, of course, Allen, we mentioned them earlier and what Jalen Jenkins brings to the table. We saw his stat line in the 71 points against Little Elm last week. Well, he's put up close to 1,000 yards in his first uh, couple games, first half of the season as well. All right, I like the uh, premise for that one you're getting caught up in the Zeke Elliott and Tony Pollard start to the season <laughs> with the ground games on the high school level. I'm getting caught up in the Arizona Cardinals start to this Ooh. season. They're unbeaten and my three power programs are all unbeaten and a couple of them have uh, histories that date back to state championships in the past. How about Louisville though? They had a decade from 2008 until 2017 where the Fighting Farmers only won 26 out of 100 games. Well they won 29 out of 40 games the last four years. They're 6-0 and this year. Okay, Garland was 8-32 and over a four-year period. Then last year under Danny Russell, 5-4. and This year they're 6-0 and going into this matchup against Saxe. And then Kaufman. Kaufman, 6-15 and the last two years. They are 7-0 and this year. And do you know who won the Division II 7-on-7 state championship this summer? That would be Kaufman. Kaufman yes. did? Wow. Kaufman, that's exactly right. Maybe that's a little reason. foreshadowing Yes, there. that's right. With 6'6", six, six, Dalen Dickerson catching all it. those passes for <laughs> Kaufman. Work out. Okay, those are our power programs. Our Landry Award watch list when we come back here on Friday Night Stars. Friday Night Stars, presented by Whataburger, was brought to you by GEICO. 85 years of savings and service. Texas Lottery. Play the Dallas Cowboys scratch ticket today. It's your ticket for a chance to win big. And by Whataburger. Order online using the app or at whataburger.com. 
for curbside pickup from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. or delivery. A pair of past Landry Award finalists shined in Oklahoma's win over Texas last weekend. Marvin Mims out of Frisco Lone Star with a spectacular catch for one of his two touchdowns. And how about Kennedy Brooks from Mansfield, the 2016 Landry Award winner. He rushed for 217 yards in the game, winning a touchdown as Oklahoma won that game. So how about this week's Landry Award watch list? We're taking a look, Kyle, at some of the top wide receivers statistically in the area. You look at some of the history of this award and there have been some great receivers that have worked their way through either being a finalist or actually winning it. I know one, of course, Marvin Mims, you just talked about Jack Jackson Smith and Jigbo from Rockwall a couple years ago winning the award. I mean, there are a lot of good names on this, but I want to talk about Maddox Albritton from Keller Timber Creek. This is a guy who last year only had 186 total yards in the entire season. He's turned around and really found himself a role. I love the way that he's kind of come from underneath the radar to find its way onto this watch list. Grayson Harris, we mentioned him earlier in the show, a freshman. A freshman that not only has never won the Landry Award, a freshman has never been a Landry Award finalist. But maybe Grayson Harris can, can be a first this year. Uh, it's always a, a pleasure to be involved in the voting, and you can be a part of it as well as nominations will be taken uh, next month on CBSDFW.com, uh, and the Landry Award will be awarded in early uh, December. Some great candidates, and I know you're keeping a watch on all of them every week <laughs> when no, you're calling games. No doubt about it. I'm watching every single one of the players for not only what they do on the field, but what they do off of it, because that's what matters with the Landry Award. All right, that does it for this edition of Friday Night Stars. For Kyle Yeomans, I'm Bill Jones. Enjoy your weekend of high school football, and we will see you again next week on Friday Night Stars.